What's up, Grid Church? How are you this morning? Welcome to Christmas at the Grid. We are so excited that you have clicked the link and chosen to spend your morning with us. I hope that you're having an amazing holiday season. If it's your very first time this morning with us, we want to say welcome. We're so glad you're here. There is info below that you can click the link and text the number. It's my first time to get a little bit more info about the grid. We want a chance to connect with you and hear your story and just share a little bit more of what we're about, as well as if you call the grid church your home and you are being faithful to the Lord and you're giving here, we want to say thank you because your giving is truly making a difference, especially in this holiday season. We're able to do our I Love My City outreaches and bless so many. And it's just an amazing thing that you get to be a part of investing in God's kingdom. And we want to say thank you for that. There's a link below. You can go to the grid.church and click give and continue to be faithful that way in your giving. I'm going to turn it over right now to our worship team for some time and God's presence. And then I'm going to be back in just a couple minutes to bring the talk this morning.
this morning to be able to bring the talk with you um, and we are doing a few week series here Christmas at the grid we just finished the book of Philippians if you've been with us um, and we will be launching a new book in the new year stay tuned for that but we are going to look at the amazing Christmas story over the next couple weeks and this morning we're gonna be in Luke chapter 1 if you have your Bibles you can turn there as well as it'll be on the screen if you don't um verses 26 through 38 and the title of today's talk is nothing is impossible with God do you believe that this morning I believe that this morning how many of you remember the royal baby announcements anyone <laughs> How many of you remember the royal wedding first, right? Well, there's been a couple of them, but I remember I love to follow the royal family. It's just, I mean, so many people do. And I remember when the very first royal baby announcement came out. It was um, Prince William and Kate and she was pregnant and it was all over everything and all eyes were on this pregnancy and even when she actually gave birth, like all eyes literally right on the hospital as they stepped down the steps and they showed the baby and it just was such a spectacular moment. All eyes on the royal baby, right? Um, I think back to actually mine and David's baby announcements, if you will, not that we had a royal baby, but um, just trying to think of like creative ways to share the news, well, not our baby announcements, but announcing our first child. And we were, not that it was a royal baby, but we were trying to think of creative ways to announce this this baby, right? This pregnancy is such a big deal and it's such an amazing, joyous thing. And so we had a whole photo shoot done um, and then picked a special image that we shared with the world um, of how we were with child and it was so exciting. And so as we come to this today, I was just thinking about baby announcements because this passage that we have today, we literally, quite literally, have the announcement of a royal baby today and the announcement that we're gonna see today is like the most wonderful event that has ever happened the announcement of Jesus's birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and there's never been 
better good news proclaimed than this story that we're going to look at this morning. And if you're with me in Luke chapter 1, we're going to pick it up in verse 26 this morning. Again, it'll be on the screen as well, but let's dive right in this morning. Let's look at this amazing good news. It says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Angel Gabriel. So Angel Gabriel is actually mentioned three times in scripture and every single time that Gabriel is mentioned, his messages actually point to the coming Messiah all three times. So the first time we see Gabriel, it's in the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, Daniel had had a vision and Gabriel actually appears to explain the vision to him. And while explaining it, he says that the ruler, the Messiah will be put to death. And of course, that was pointing um, to Jesus' death on the cross so many years later. And the second time Gabriel appears in the word, it's to Zechariah. And that's actually earlier in this chapter, Luke chapter 1. He appears to Zechariah and tells him that him and his wife Elizabeth, who is very old, well in age, she is going to bear a son. She is going to conceive and she... I mean, that would be like an impossible thing for someone of Elizabeth's age. But Gabriel appears and tells Zechariah that. And the child that Elizabeth was going to bear is actually John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, as we know, is the forerunner. He is the one that came before Jesus to prepare the way for the Messiah. And then we see this the third time Gabriel appears. He appears to Mary to give the announcement of the baby, our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at it, verse 21. To a virgin, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So let's look at a little bit of background on Mary. Mary is a very young girl. Um, some say even like barely a teenager, like 12, 13 is kind of the age that is suspected that Mary was. So can you imagine this? Okay, she is so young and just living her life, going about her life. She is no one special. And we find her here in this story and she is pledged to be married to Joseph. And in those days, this idea of being betrothed or being pledged to marry someone is this actual agreement between the families, okay, that they would be married, um, but the wedding has not taken place yet. So if they're betrothed or pledged, it means that the agreement, this document has been signed and it is official, but then there's this waiting period until um, the celebration, the wedding feast, okay? So during that period of time, they're actually considered to be married but they are not um, permitted to be together as husband and wife and to consummate that marriage. So Mary would be living with her parents. Joseph would be living with his parents. And this would kind of be, um, if you think of like our wedding, our engagement, our wedding planning time, okay? That is what's going on right now in the life of Mary, okay? So she's betrothed to Joseph and think, I mean, she's just this young girl. And I mean, I think back to my wedding planning season of life. How many brides out there remember wedding planning? Um, I'm sure you can get thoughts all on the spectrum. Some would say it was the most stressful time ever. Others that it was so enjoyable. Um, but I remember it and I loved it with a little bit of stress. In. I mean, there's always a little bit, right? But I loved wedding planning. I loved the details. I'm, I'm like a detail girl. Obviously, every bride dreams of their dress and choosing their wedding dress and the cake testing and the um, rings and I was all about it, okay? All the things, okay? So that's where we find Mary in this story. This is the part that we're picking up at. She is in the moment in her life that she is betrothed to the love of her life, um, but the wedding celebration hasn't happened yet, so they are in this kind of wedding planning time and just imagine that she's just on cloud nine just smitten in love and planning this wedding okay so she's a teenager or almost okay she can hardly think of anything else she's so focused on this and then this moment this moment god breaks in he sends gabriel on the scene and he is about to ask this unknown teenage girl to take part in something 
so shocking, something that quite literally will change the existence of the world forever. So let's pick it up here in verse 28 and see. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favor one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Wow. Imagine the scene for a moment. You have the young, this young girl. Her mom probably just told her to go out and do some chores. And she's just going about her day. And all of a sudden, an angel appears. And the scripture says, like, she was greatly troubled at this greeting, at this angel appearing. I mean, greatly troubled, I feel like, is almost an understatement for just the shock that she must have been feeling in that moment of just complete awe. I mean, if you saw an angel, if I saw an angel, just complete awe. And then the angel speaks to her. And what the angel says, greetings, oh favor, one. I mean, she's probably pinching herself at this point. Like, what is happening? Am I dreaming? What is going on, right? Highly favored one. The definition of favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due an act of kindness beyond what is due. God's choosing of Mary to bear this child springs from his grace. Not from anything she did, not from who she was. God's choosing of her was his unmerited grace and goodness and favor on her. Her description as one who has found favor with God makes it clear that God has acted on her behalf, that it wasn't because of her, but God's favor was on her. In fact, we see that, that Mary was totally perplexed, like, who, me? You know, who, she was so shocked that she was the one that had found favor with God, and it just goes to show it was nothing she did. God's grace and his favor is simply that it's unmerited it's undeserved but it's because of his goodness and kindness that he shows favor to us let's look at verse 31 the angel goes on and behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name jesus okay hold on <laughs> she just listens to this angel talk to her and call her highly favored and the next line, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. 12 or 13 years old, betrothed to a man who she has not been intimate with. Who, can you imagine what's going through her mind if she's pregnant and she hasn't been intimate with Joseph and Joseph finds out? Like, what is going to happen? Is he going to divorce her? That would be so shameful, so shameful in that culture for him to divorce her or even worse, worse things could happen to her. And here the angel is saying, you are going to conceive and you're going to bear a son. Look at what else. Verse 32, he will be great. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Let's look at that. Let's look at this prophecy that Gabriel declares about who Jesus will be. Jesus will be the son of God. And we see the same account actually in Matthew. And Matthew says, you will call him Jesus because he will take away the sins of the world. You will call him Jesus because he will take away the sins of the world. Jesus literally means Yahweh saves. Gabriel is saying to Mary, you will bear a son. You will bear a child, but not just any child, not just any son. He is going to be the son of God. This prophecy just declares who he is. Jesus 
not just, it's not a title. He's not just to be called the son of God. He quite literally is the son of God. Isaiah 7 chapter verse 14 says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Hebrews 1, 3, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus as God's son has the very imprint of God. This baby that was to be born is the exact duplicate of the nature of God because he is God. This prophecy not only declares that Jesus is the son of God, but it declares that Jesus has authority as the eternal king. Let's look at that next part. It says, he, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. His authority as the eternal king. We must see that Jesus has a spiritual kingdom, right? This is it. He didn't come to earth to set up this earthly kingdom. His kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. He came to earth to establish it. It continues now in our hearts and the hearts of believers everywhere. And he is coming back someday and will rule and reign forever. His kingdom will never end. So you have the angel Gabriel finishing laying out all this amazing news to this 13 year old Mary who is betrothed to Joseph. I can't imagine how much would have been running through her mind, how scared and how frightened and all the questions, all the things. So Okay, so am I not going to have a wedding? So is Joseph even going to want to be with me anymore? Is anyone going to believe me? All these questions you have in that moment. And I can't imagine what she was thinking. And I want us to look this morning at her response. I want us to look this morning at her response to the word of the Lord coming to her. We can learn something from Mary this morning. And this morning I want us to look at three things. Three things that when God speaks... How should we respond? The first thing this morning is without hesitation. Let's look at verse 34. This is Mary's response. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? She just listened to all of this. And her response is, How will this be since I am a virgin? I'm thinking about what I would possibly have responded with, and I doubt it would have been that. I mean, it probably would have been, um, I think, looking around, I think you might have the wrong girl. <laughs> um, I'm Mary, dude, I'm Mary, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm betrothed to Joseph, I've never been with a man. Okay, she doesn't, but, 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 she doesn't stutter, she doesn't stumble, she doesn't, um, doubt she simply says how will this be since I am a virgin and I want us to look at something really interesting because we just talked about how Gabriel appeared to Zechariah to announce the birth of his son and Mary and I want us to look at how these responses of Zechariah and Mary's are so different they're so similar in the stories as you read them Gabriel coming and saying that there's going to be this miracle, this miracle birth for, for Zechariah and Elizabeth, it's that Elizabeth is so old in age, so she would not be able to bear. For Mary, it would be that she's a virgin, right? Um, you have so many similarities in Gabriel's announcement, but I want us to look at the response between Zechariah and Mary and how it differs. Here's what Zechariah says. This is found earlier in the chapter, Luke chapter 1, verse 18. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. How shall I know this? And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. Wow. 
the exact same announcement Gabriel sent to Zechariah. His response was, was one of doubt. How will this be? And the angel Gabriel said it. You did not believe my words. He questioned it. He, he doubted. And it's so interesting because we look back at Mary and we see that she didn't doubt. She listened. She accepted. And then she immediately responded without hesitation, without, uh, uh, I no, I don't. I don't think that's me. I don't think I'm the one for this job. No, she responded without hesitation, no doubt. And I think about our children and when we try to teach something that we try to teach our children is um, not just listening, but, but responding and responding the first time and responding without hesitation and we teach them to obey and to listen to our voice and instruction and to respond. I mean, they're children, so they're obviously still learning, but why is why do we as parents teach that? Because we want to teach them to listen to God's voice, to listen to God's voice, to not doubt God's voice, to not think that they know better, right? Because God sometimes speaks and we don't understand. How many of you know that? God sometimes speaks and it doesn't make sense. But he doesn't ask us to understand or to have it all figured out. He just simply wants us to respond without hesitation. And it's so amazing. You we see Mary does this here. Mary says, she does respond with a question, but it's not of doubt and I don't know about this. It's just simply how how will this happen since I am a virgin? She accepted it. And, and in such a moment, I mean, all the thoughts swirling through her head, and yet in that simple moment, how will this be since I am a virgin? How many times does God speak and we think about that? We think about our status or our experience or where we come from or our past or our situation, right? How many times? And I just want to encourage you this morning that God is not concerned about any of those things. God's not concerned about your status. He's not concerned about your abilities or your lack of. He's not concerned about your experience or where you come from. None of those things matter to God. He's only looking for someone that will respond to him, to his word, to his call without hesitation. When God speaks, I want to be challenged to respond without hesitation to what he is asking and calling me to do. Look at this. The angel goes on to answer her. The angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Can we say that again? For nothing will be impossible with God. He's just told her, don't worry, Mary. Don't worry about your position, about your status, about you being a virgin. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. How incredible. The power of the Most High. For nothing is impossible with God. It's like a literal mic drop. Nothing is impossible with God. I'm pretty sure that covers everything. Nothing is impossible. Maybe you just need to hear that this morning. Nothing is impossible with God. He even goes on to tell her that um, Elizabeth, her, her relative who's well in age has already conceived a baby and is in her sixth month. This is the first time that Mary's hearing of this news. And it's as if that word of the Lord Gabriel is just speaking straight to her heart just to let her know nothing is impossible with God. And this, this baby John the Baptist who's inside of Elizabeth was born six months before Jesus, six months before. And it was prophesied that he would go before and he would prepare the way for the Messiah. And that is what he did. Everything that God said and that the Gabriel said as a result of a word from the Lord came to pass. Let's look this morning at the second 
way that we should respond to the Lord when he speaks. It's with humility. Verse 38, and Mary continued, she said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. I am the servant of the Lord. I don't want us to underestimate this morning what Mary saying yes to this cost her. It, in her mind, in that moment, it quite literally was costing her everything. Her reputation. People would never look at her the same. She potentially does not even have a life now. Like a love, a wedding, a marriage, everything she's planned for, everything she thought and imagined for her life, children with Joseph, all these things. In that moment, none of that existed. And she was willing in that moment to humble herself. What 12, 13 year old, I mean, doesn't think they have it figured out. You know what I mean? And for Mary in that moment, with all humility, after hearing all of that, to respond with the attitude of, I am the Lord's servant. I am simply a servant of the Lord. She knew what that meant. She knew what saying yes to this meant, and yet she was willing with a humble heart to accept this, to accept this call. She was quite literally risking everything. She was risking losing the man she loved. Her whole future was on the line, and yet she said yes. And all of those things were just the beginning. She could not have any way of knowing what the future would actually hold for her in that moment that she chose to just say, I am the Lord's servant. Before it was all over, she would experience heartache, opposition, slander, despair, loneliness. Can you imagine all that she walked through and in the end she would face a mother's worst nightmare, the hugest heartbreak of a mother, and that is to watch her son die on the cross. She would have no idea the road, what the road looked like ahead, but yet in that moment, she simply responded with, I am the Lord's servant. She accepted that call, and I wanna challenge us this morning, are we willing to submit to God's plan? even if it means earthly sacrifice, because it will cost us something. It will cost you something, it will cost me something to submit to the Lord's plan, to answer his call, to respond to his voice and what he's asking us to do. It will cost us something earthly. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Mary couldn't know all those things. Perhaps if she had, would she still have said yes? Sometimes I think that I wish I knew what the future looked like, right? Like I'd love to see 10, 15 years in the future, that planner side of me. I just wanna see, I just, I wanna know what my kids are gonna be when they grow up. I wanna see, just, I like, just think that. But do we really, do we really want to see that far into the future? I think it's a gift that we aren't able to. I think it's a gift that our Heavenly Father holds it all. And He just allows us to see just enough just to keep following Him because He knows if we saw the whole picture that there's no way that our human minds would be able to wrap around it, we would be so overwhelmed. He just allows us to just keep taking step after step, day after day after Him, and He just reveals a little bit more of the plan He has for us. The third thing this morning, how we should respond to the Lord's call is full of faith, full of faith. Let's look at this verse. She said, let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. It says, and then the angel departed from her. She believed. Mary trusted fully. She didn't doubt. She, who knows what was possibly going on in her head, but her spirit and her heart responded without hesitation, responded with a humble heart and full of faith. May it be to me according to your word. This may be one of the greatest 
fade statements of all time. Of all time. We read it so often. This is so a part of the Christmas story. But when we really look at the detail of this story and what it actually would have looked like and what it actually would have cost in Mary in that day, it is so amazing and it is so challenging to us as believers. This angel appears to her. She's just living her life and says, you are highly favored. You're going to bear a son. You're going to call him Jesus. He is going to be great. His kingdom is going to never end. But don't worry that you're, you're a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. All of this stuff. And she responds, let it be to me according to your word. She didn't stumble around. She responded full of faith. Mary said yes. She said yes to the impossible. She said yes to the unknown. She simply said yes to the plan of God. The greatest baby announcement in all the world. She said yes. I want to encourage you this morning that if you wait to respond till you can understand God's working and how all the details will work and God's plan and what it looks like. If you wait and if you delay and if you don't respond to that prompting that you won't see God do very much in your life. You won't see, you maybe won't see the miraculous in your life. If you want to see the supernatural and the miraculous and God work in am amazing ways you can never imagine, you don't have to understand it. You don't have to have it figured out. You simply have to respond to him. You simply have to say, I am your servant, Lord. I will follow after you. May it be to me as you have said and just follow him. You don't have to have it figured out. Later in this chapter, Elizabeth goes on to tell Mary that she is blessed. Verse 45 of this chapter says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what God has spoken to her. Elizabeth said, Mary, you are blessed. Your life is blessed because you believed. You believed that what the Lord said was true. You believed that and you are blessed. And I don't know about you, but I want to live a blessed life. I want to live a life full of favor and blessing. I want to say yes to the Lord, even if I don't know what that looks like and what that means. I just want to challenge you this morning that nothing is impossible with God. And maybe in this year, 2020, you need to hear that. You need to hear that nothing is impossible with our God. You need your faith to be encouraged and built up and strengthened this morning. Say it with me right now, for nothing is impossible with God. Say it again, for nothing is impossible with God. Maybe your spirit needs to hear that this morning. Here's two words that so often go together. Christmas and miracles. I know that some of you are carrying heavy burdens today, this year, around, around the holidays. This idea of Christmas and miracles and, and you, you, have the, you have a heavy heart. Maybe you're missing loved ones. Maybe it has been a rough year. Maybe you lost your job this year. Maybe finances look tough. Maybe um, sickness has crept into your home, into your life. You serve a God for whom nothing is impossible. Speak that into your life today. Speak that over your situation. Believe that this morning. With God, all things are possible. God will do what he says he will do. He will be faithful. He will be faithful. But the question I want us to be challenged with this morning is when he speaks, he will be faithful and he will do what he says he's gonna do and his word will always prevail. But when he speaks, how will we respond? How will we respond when it doesn't make sense? When he's asking us to step out in faith in this area um, and to give and the finances are there or, or to, um, to speak into someone's life and to share, but we don't have the words. Will we open our mouth and will we trust that the Holy Spirit will speak those words through us into that person, into that situation. Well, we trust that when we give, that God will give back over and beyond. We talked about that last week. Will we trust 
Will we respond without hesitation? Will we respond with a humble heart? Not that this life is our own, but that everything we are is because of our God. And we are simply the Lord's servant on this earth. Just want to leave you with this question. What does God want from you today? What does God want from me today? It's the same thing that he wanted from Mary. He's looking for us to put our full faith and trust in him. This Christmas, 2020, 2021, every day of our life to put our faith and our trust in him because he will do what he said he's going to do. For nothing is impossible with God. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we come to you this morning and I know that there are those watching out there, Father, that are in need this morning of a word from you. They are in need this morning of a touch from you, Jesus. They need to hear from you. Father, and I pray that wherever my friends are at this morning, I pray that your presence would so surround them, Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill their hearts, would fill their homes to overflowing right now, Jesus. And I just pray that this Christmas season, Father, would just be about us looking to you. God, laying our lives before you and saying these lives are not our own. God, we give them to you. Father, work however you want to work in our lives. And maybe you're out there watching as I was talking this morning, you're feeling that, that stirring in your heart that, you, that your life isn't one, that you're living for the Lord, that you are doing your own thing. And you feel that drawing right now and that is the Holy Spirit. He's drawing you back to himself, back to the Lord this morning. Maybe you used to walk with the Lord and you don't now or Maybe you never have, but you click that link this morning. You don't know why, and I want to encourage you. God is here. God is with you right now. And I would love it this morning if you would pray a prayer with me. I'm going to pray it. You can pray it with me at home. There's nothing magical about the specific words, but as you declare it in faith, the Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you declare it with your mouth, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to give your heart to the Lord this morning. So would you pray with me? Say, dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I confess my sin to you. I ask that you would forgive me, that you would fill me, that you would free me. I commit to living for you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. That is so amazing. Did you know that when you pray that prayer, when you give your heart to the Lord, heaven right now is celebrating? That is a Christmas miracle. That is so amazing. And if you prayed that prayer, and if you are like, I don't know what the next step is, I don't really know what this all means, at the bottom, there's a number you can text. It will send us a message and we would love to connect with you and to walk this journey with you, give you some next steps to help you in this life of following Christ. I am so excited that you guys joined us this Sunday morning for Christmas at the grid. I just pray this week that you would be so blessed and that you would just go in the favor and the love of Jesus and just shine his light to everyone you come in contact with. We will see you back next week right here, 11 a.m. online. Have a blessed week.